inferior limb muscles moving the leg and the thigh. So I'm not exactly sure what I was thinking when I divided this up, but we've got most of our muscles in the inferior limb to talk about in this first chunk. So the, the leg is, the thigh is divided into compartments. And those compartments are actually separated by connective tissue socks. And when you go in and dissect, you actually um, come across these really interesting, um, they're compartments. And it's really true. It's not just like somebody was like, oh, that's cool. Let's call this a compartment. It really is separated. And you can visualize the fact that this group of muscles is all on the anterior surface of your thigh. So we've got six of them that we're going to look at in the anterior um, compartment. And the first one is rectus femoris. Rectus meaning straight, straight muscle next to the femur. The rectus femoris goes up and it actually attaches to a part of the ilium, the anterior inferior iliac spine, which makes me slightly regret taking that off of your bone list to do. The rectus femoris is part of the quadriceps group, and quad means four, which means there are four muscles that are part of the quadriceps group. And we've already kind of talked about it because we studied the knee. And we learned that the patella is this sesamoid bone that's floating inside this patellar ligament. And all of our quadri quadriceps muscles, all four of them, attach to, through the patella, to the patellar ligament, and finally on the tibial tuberosity. So any of our muscles up here that I'm about to mark that go through that distal attachment process, they are part of the quadriceps group. So rectus femoris, awesome. And it attaches proximally, I call that the distal. This is distal, this is proximal. My proximal attachment was up there in the um, anterior inferior iliac spine. Now, I also have vastus medialis a giant bulging muscle toward the middle uh, on the medial side of your thigh. And vastus medialis is uh, attached, actually like smears onto the femur itself. But again, it comes all the way down and has this distal attachment to the tibial tuberosity. Here is vastus lateralis. And vastus lateralis actually goes up and attaches to the greater trochanter of the femur. So vastus lateralis and medialis both attach to the femur, whereas rectus femoris actually attaches to the ilium of the pelvis. And the consequences of that mean that vastus, I mean rectus femoris is actually going to um, not only move the leg since it's attached to the tibia, but it's also going to move the thigh because it's attached to the pelvis. So it actually, it spans two joints. And when a muscle spans two joints, it's going to cause movement in both of those joints. So we have vastus lateralis, we have vastus medialis, we have rectus femoris. One more, ah, vastus intermedius. Vastus intermedius is deep to rectus femoris, so we can't actually see it here. All right, those are my quadriceps muscles. And their attachments. Vastus intermedius attaches to the anterior lateral femur. That works for me. Now, this might be my favorite thigh muscle right there. Look at it. It attaches up here at the anterior superior iliac spine. You can totally see it attaching there. And it forms an S for sartorius. And it actually comes all the way around and um, attaches down here to the medial side of, or was it lateral side of tibial tuberosity? Um, medial side of tibial tuberosity. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? I guess you would think it would be super medial, but it's like over here medial. This is sartorius. Sartorius is responsible for um, your leg 
crossing your legs. And then we have one more in this zone, and that is this guy right here, and that's tensor fascia latte. And tensor fascia latte is attached to also your iliac crest, and then it attaches to the IT band, and the IT band is like this crazy tendon thing that's huge and long, and you can actually see it on runners when they're doing their thing. I'm having deja vu. Have I done this talk on, I think, I, well, no, I don't know if you've had this lecture video style, I'm having memories of doing this before. All right, the medial compartment, uh, that was all anterior. The medial compartment of my lovely thigh is two things. My favorite of the medial compartment, and this is gracilis. Gracilis attaches to the pubis, and it attaches down here to somewhere on the tibia, the medial side of the tibia. It's straight. It's long, it's skinny, it's obvious, it's easy to find, but it's straight down the middle. That's gracilis, as opposed to the long, skinny, snaking across your thigh, sartorius. So don't get those mixed up. But this is gracilis. I won't tell you Ralph's gracilis joke, at least not on public venues such as this one. And then we also have, then we just have this group of adductors, adductors. And if you look at them, dude, they look like they will do nothing more than adduct. And they look like they attach to the pubis. One of them, one of our adductor group attaches to the uh, ischial tuberosity. But for the most part, they just adduct and they're big and they're obvious and we're just knowing them as a group. And now you know their action because that's really cool and they attach to the femur. All right, let's go to the back side, shall we? Who's this? Gluteus maximus. And gluteus maximus attaches all along here and then attaches to the IT band and to the femur. Gluteus maximus um, extends the thigh and laterally rotates it, and I agree with both of those. Lateral rotation, I can see those guys shortening and then rotating out and then extending the thigh. That works for me. Gluteus medius is one layer deep to gluteus maximus, and you can actually see gluteus medius right here. And here we've um, cut back gluteus maximus. We've actually cut gluteus medius as well. But you can see that gluteus maximus is going to go over the top of that, and medius would lay down, hiding another whole layer of holy what? Another whole layer of, um, those are deep rotators. And we don't even have to know those guys in a group. We, those are irrelevant to us. So gluteus maximus and gluteus medius. Gluteus medius, you can feel it. Gluteus maximus you can grab, but gluteus medius, if you start palpating up by your iliac crest, that's gluteus medius that's up there. Uh, and then we've got our hamstrings group. So anterior side, we have quadriceps. Po <coughs> posterior side, we have hamstrings. So let's label our hamstrings. It hasn't been a long night of, um, recording lectures at all. What are you talking about? All right, focus. This is the lateral side. This is the medial side. Do you agree with that? I do. The first of our hamstrings group is biceps femoris, which is why if you are taking a quiz or an exam, you better say biceps femoris if you mean the leg version. And you better say biceps brachii if you mean the arm version. And if you aren't specific, I'm not going to know what you mean, and it's going to be wrong. All right, so biceps femoris, here's, it has two heads, biceps two heads. And both heads have a distal attachment on the head of the fibula. We haven't attached anything to the fibula. The fibula is like this tiny little floater that who even knows about that thing? But we know that fibula is lateral and it's in the leg. And so both of our um, 
biceps femoris attach to the head of the fibula. They do not both attach to the same place proximally. The long head attaches to the ischial tuberosity. Right about there. Oh, look, this looks like maybe, maybe that's the long head right there because that looks in, like an ischial tuberosity. Okay, we'll have to investigate that further later. The short head attaches to the femur itself. So it's like going to do that whole smear action and smear onto the femur. But the long head is going to go all the way up to the ischial tuberosity, spanning two joints, meaning that it's going to have more than just one movement possible. Um, it's going to extend the thigh and it's going to flex the leg. And I'll let you think about that and it makes perfect sense. It just hurts that the same big limb is going to do two different things by one muscle extending and flexing. But it, it makes sense if you think about it. Um, we have, that was biceps femoris, short and long head, and they're lateral. My other um, two muscles that are in <sighs> the hamstring group, they are here. So they both attach to the ischial tuberosity, and one of them is semitendinosus. And I'm sorry, but I look at that and I'm like, I don't see my rockin' long fantastic tendon that is um, there, but when you look at it in our bodies, it has this huge, long, fantastic tendon, and it's very clear that it is semitendinosus. And then it's really interesting because medial to semitendinosus is semimembranosus, and that guy is also a hamstrings muscle attaching to the ischial tuberosity, but that one is, <clears throat> has this really weird membranous tendon. And so it looks very unique and different and is easy to identify. Membranosis is also medial. Tendinosis is lateral. All right. Both of these guys attach to the medial aspect of the tibia. That works for you, doesn't it? Over here we were attaching to the fibula. Over here we're attaching to the tibia. What? Are you ready to move your feet and your toes? Let's go, dogs. Let's go.